Okay, so we're going to practice at this time using something called scholarly journals. Scholarly journals. So before I get into my explanation, who can tell me what scholarly means or what you think it means? Why do they call these scholarly journals? Something you can use um, in college. Yeah, okay, good answer, good guess. Um, something you can use in college. What else? Anybody else have a guess? Let me close this door. Yeah, it can, depending on what career you plan on going into. So, especially if you're going into something like social work or nursing or anything medical, there's a journal for everything. But um, people in certain careers sometimes tend to use them more. So maybe if I'm in, um, I'm an office manager and my job all day is to type and answer phones, then I might not need to read journals about how to answer the phone properly as much as I would if I'm into nursing and they just created a new way to treat patients. Or one that blew my mind yesterday at the dentist, she said, oh, I need you to just stand right here next to my laptop. And then now they do the x-rays, they have a um, flat USB flash drive, they stick it into the laptop, it's this little string that bounce, and they can just stick something from their laptop to your mouth and take the x-ray. So a lot of the other things that they used to have, remember you had to stand in the room and had a thing covering you and do all this other stuff. My girl was like, you hear what you need today? Hold on, let me grab my laptop. Push some buttons, stuck the thing in the side of her laptop. Next thing I know, picture of my teeth x-rays on her screen. Technology is getting better and better. <laughs> and so, <laughs> journals are important because if this new technology happened or first was created or discovered in California or Texas, and I'm in Ohio, then I might be the last one to know about it. So then I'm going to subscribe to things like journals or scholarly organizations so I could keep up with all the latest news. So part of college and being a good college student is knowing how to find a scholarly journal. Some of them come in book form like this, and some of them are online. But part of college is doing what? Writing essays, papers and essays, or conducting research. Because you need to know, whatever your field is, how to find the latest information about that. Especially if you plan on making some decent money. Now, if you just said, look, I get Section 8 anyway. <laughs> so I like my house. They pay my rent. I just want to be the secretary secretary. I want to make minimum wage. We good? I mean, but I'm just saying. So the more you learn, the higher you can go in most cases. So if you just said that scholarly job, that's too much for me. I don't want to learn how to do research. I don't want to learn nothing new. But now if you see it, I just saw in the newspaper the CEO, I don't know, of university hospitals need an assistant. And I type 90 words a minute. But he's also going to need you to know the latest things going on. So if you're here in Ohio, but they got some cold research going on in New York somewhere, then your job might be once a week to just open one of these called latest hospital administration research and to kind of flip through it and see what other hospitals doing so y'all could jump on it too and that's the kind of stuff that gets you raises and bonuses so the more you're willing to, to learn the more you're willing to do the more you will what rise earn, earn. earn. Well, yeah so 
there. So I could still be at some of my old jobs, Tiffin University, Tri-C or Cuyahoga Community College. Or guess what? Every day when I got off work, I was in somebody's journal like this. And now I make my own hours and I decide how much I make by how many classes we offer. Oh, okay, I'm making a decent amount. We got morning classes, but you know what? Mama needs some shoes, so let's add some weekend classes too. And then I'm a triple tuition because I decide what I make. So you decide what you're going to earn by how much more and how much extra you're willing to do during school. All right, so because of that, and it's my job to challenge you, today, you're going to learn how to do <laughs> Did she say, I don't like that sneaky? Okay, so today, one of the things you're going to learn to keep moving up your levels, you're like, please, once I get out this class, no. <laughs> No, but seriously, I'm at least, see, I knew I had, I had one in every class. Be like, please, when this over, she could, she could save all that motivational <laughs> Martin Luther, Dr. Isom crazy. All right, so here we go, though. I need everybody to take out your sample reference page. And what we're going to do is break it down. Um, and we're going to compare it to this journal. Because when we're done, you're going to make a reference page. So we'll make one together at first. So let's look at, hmm, I'll be nice. Let's look at the second reference on the sample page I gave you first. Let's break that down and tear it apart. I want you to number these parts because... When you're looking at a page like this, all you see is a bunch of words, right? Yeah. And some of you like, I don't know what none of that means. I just know it's a list of people who did something about something and I see some dates. So let's break it down so that you understand it better. We're looking at reference number two, the second one on the page. What's the first thing you see for the second reference? American. All right, the American Psychiatric Association. Now, why do you think that's right there? What is that for? Who is the American Psychiatric Association? Why do I have their name listed? No. Somebody guess for me. No, the American Psychological Association is actually APA, but the... Uh, Psychiatric Association is closely related. We'll discuss the differences soon. I heard somebody else. Somebody say something. All right, so let me help you guys with number one. But you guys are going to jump in here. Okay, so American Psychiatric Association is the author. Uh-huh. I wish you would have. All right, so you're going to write number one author and you're going to point to American Psychiatric Association. So what we've shown you in this sample is that when you're making a reference page, what are you always going to tell me first every time you use a book? Uh -huh. Who's the author? See, not that bad. So wait, that's number one. Well, we're on reference number two. What I'm doing is breaking down the parts of a reference. Oh, so, so number one, or what's always going to go first, is the author. No matter which book you're reading, which magazine, which website, if it's a website, you're going to scroll down to the bottom or somewhere at the top, and they're going to tell you who wrote the website. If it's a book, you're going to flip into the inside. Y'all know what a copyright page looks like? I'll show you if you don't. But on the inside, it'll say copyright 2017 written by Cleveland Heights Library or whoever wrote it. But you're always going to list the author first. All right. Who can tell me what's the second thing or part two of a reference? The year. The year was published. So next to American Psychiatric Association, what's next? The year. What year? 2000, put a two on top of that and put year. Now, if you turn in a paper with a reference page and your reference doesn't have all of these parts, 
guess what? When you estimating in your head what your grade was, go ahead and drop it one letter grade because if your reference don't have all these parts, excuse me, doesn't have all these parts, you already know you're not getting the maximum amount of points. So number one is author. Number two is year. What is number three, the third part of a reference? The topic? No. The, um, the, the, the title? The title of what? The book. The book. And this one had a pretty lengthy, or at least it was long enough, title. It's called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the fourth edition, revision, or text revised. That's what that abbreviation means. That's the whole title. And that's part what? Three. Three. <coughs> All right, so what's after the title? What's part four? The location. The location, the location where the book was what? Made, published. published or made, either one. Yes, ma'am. And then the fifth part, I'm going to give you all this part. Um, it says author right there. And normally you would list the publisher's name. So part five is the publisher's name. The only reason it says author right there is because this author also has their own publishing company. So they saved money and did what? Published it themselves. So, somebody answer my question. If I'm writing a paper and I use the book, and then at the end of the paper, I need to tell whoever my professor is, Dr. Johnson, how many, I need to tell Dr. Johnson what book I use or how many books I use. How many parts should each reference have? Wait, how many books you said? Stay with me. If I used this book as my reference, how many parts should I have when I list this on my reference page? Five. Five. What are the five parts of a reference for a book? The author, the title, the publisher. Give them to me in order. The author, the publisher. Ah, stop. The author, the year. The title, the location, and the publisher name. Thank you. It's really not that hard, is it? It's five parts. They label and they in front of you. As long as you keep up with these page, this page, this sample, it shows you the five parts. Get this now while I'm giving you samples of what it looks like and I'm breaking it down and explaining it and having you number it. Do you think when you get to college, they gonna stop class for an hour and break this down and name the parts and have you number them? No. They're going to say, go read chapter 8. It's going to be about 82 pages. And it's going to say, here's how to write a reference. I'm summarizing all that on one piece of paper. <laughs> and I'm having you break it down and number it. So get it while you're here. Let me go number four again. Location. Yeah. Um, whenever you open a book, a magazine, or anything, they're going to tell you where that publishing company is located for a lot of reasons. You might want to go buy a copy of that book or that magazine. You might want to ask that publisher to copy your work. And then just part of it is marketing. So it's very few companies that's going to want to keep it a secret where they locate it. How are you supposed to get their product? Even if it's an online only company, everything they publish is going to say, go here to buy more, or go here to see the website, or go here to place an order. So same thing with these magazines and these books. Right here on the inside, you got the cover page. The next page says, Baronet Books, New York, New York. Why? Because they want you to know, you want to buy 10 copies of this book for your class? Write us in New York, New York. Look us up. That's where we at. So that is the publisher's location. All of this makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's do, let's just do this book since I picked our book up. All right, so what's the first thing you always put for a reference? What's number one on your list we number? The author. All right, so Alice, 
<clears throat> Alexandre Dumas is our author. See it right there on the cover? All right. So if I was using this book as a reference, the first thing I'm going to do is look on the first page and put my author. What's the next thing? The year. The year. So I'm going to open my book. And this is a copyright page. And y'all know what the copyright symbol is? The C with the circle around it, you're going to look next to that. It's going to have a year. That's your copyright year. What's the third thing? Title. The title. So can y'all see the title of this book? What is it? Three Musketeers. So the third thing I would write is Three Musketeers. Because that's my title. What's the fourth thing? The location. What was the location for this book again? New York, New York. New York. And then what's the last part of a reference, part five? Well, the publisher. Baronet Books is right there inside the front cover. That's all five parts. That's the only thing we would need to list if we was writing about this book. Makes sense. Everybody understand how I broke that down? Good. So, um, now... If you're using a journal, unlike a book, a journal has seven parts instead of five. But you have a page with about one, two, three, eight, four, five, five or six examples of how to cite a journal. So at this time, here's the assignment. You're going to flip through your scholarly journal. You're going to find an article with a decent title that you probably would want to read. And then, who can tell me what we're going to do after you find an article that sounds interesting? The reference. You're going to write it up as a reference and pretend that that was your reference that you used to write your paper. Because I want you to practice making reference pages before you have to do one for real. And I'm collecting these. So you got about 10 minutes to make me a sample reference page and turn it in. Did you have a question? I was going to say, can I take this and bring it back? Girl, no, that's a $100 magazine. <laughs> well, want me um, to use something else? Yeah, you can. Just, okay. yeah, any book, magazine, just bring in tomorrow you mean your tomorrow? sample. Thursday? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. See you Thursday. See you. All right. So you guys, it's 1 o'clock at 110. Be ready to pass those forward.